Young actors living fast and dying young is nothing new, but something about the tragedies that have befallen the heroes from Angel Grove High School are especially chilling in aggregate. Of the six actors who played the original Rangers, four of them have had their lives remarkably, irrevocably jacked up, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Now, I'm starting with the assumption that yes, something spooky is afoot, so today I'm sitting down to determine empirically which Power Ranger is the most cursed. This is Cannonball. The jury's still out on the efficacy of trigger warnings, but it's worth noting that brief descriptions of, like, most things that usually get a trigger warning follow. The point of this episode isn't to make light of tragedy, but to honor the actors we felt so close to as kids, and kinda throw a side eye at the ones who really let us down. Questionable implications of color-coded casting aside, the diversity of the Power Rangers was a huge step forward for representation. They showed little kids everywhere that people of all races and genders can kick ass, get good grades, and have a good relationship with your white male boss. As a girl, an Asian American, and later the first lesbian superhero featured in a movie, Yellow Ranger Trini Kwan served as a role model for so many kids who didn't relate to the He-Men and the G.I.'s Joe of the 80s. That's why the death of actress Tui Trang was so jarring. Trang was an incredible athlete and performer. Lots of Trini's canonical abilities are based on the skills Trang brought to the role. It's also said that she used to kung so much foo that she injured herself on set repeatedly. She tragically died in a car crash in 2001. And the fact that the first ex-ranger to pass away joined the infamous 27 Club certainly kicks this off with some cursed vibes. Let's move on to Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger. Jason David Frank was probably the heart and soul of this franchise. He signed on for a 14 episode arc as Rita Repulsa's evil Power Ranger. I can still remember seeing him play his weird little ocarina dagger and thinking, boy, the Rangers sure are toast this time. I bet my parents will never get divorced. I need dragons for power! Frank was so popular, they made him the team leader and kept him around for a whopping 257 episodes. The rest of his life was a bit tumultuous. On one hand, he held the record for most pine boards broken during free fall. Remember, we got eight. It's no big deal. I'm just gonna do as many as I can. I'll be happy with Eight? <laughs> <laughs> On the other, he was almost assassinated at a Comic-Con via throwing star by a guy who thought he was literally the Punisher. And in 2022, Frank sadly took his own life at the age of 49. And as devastating as that is, it's made even more tragic in the shadow of the death of Eric Frank. Eric was Jason's real life and canonical brother, playing Tommy Oliver's mysterious older brother, David Trueheart. I'm your brother. Eric Frank had turned his bit part into a popular recurring character, but he died in 2001 at the age of 29 due to some mysterious unspecified illness. Now, he wasn't a ranger, but he had ranger blood in him, and I want to honor that with half a curse point. Here's where we get a little pedantic and statistical, but it's my show, so deal with it. Jason David Frank also played the White Ranger, the Black Ranger, and the Red Ranger at various times, so those 1.5 curse points count there too. Add to that Peter Rutter, who portrayed the mystic White Ranger and died in 2010 of a brain tumor, and then Maurice Mendoza, who died in 2013, also a bit mysteriously of unspecified causes. Mendoza played Richie, a new kid in town, who was the heir apparent to the White Ranger suit. Now that was a red herring, and Richie never ended up actually becoming a ranger, but I'm gonna say he was a junior varsity Power Ranger, and count that for half a point too. The White Ranger currently looks the most cursed with three points. Moving on to Billy Cranston, the Blue Ranger. Actor David Yost is still alive and well, but the inexcusable, absolute dog shit treatment he endured on set awards him one entire curse point. Yost was mercilessly bullied for being gay. When he reached his boiling point and walked off set one day, and the reason that I walked off is because I was called one too many times. Instead of stepping in and mediating, producers had the writers give Billy a huge demotion. He languished as the Rangers IT specialist for a while. Then they suddenly gave him a weird aging disease, replacing Yost with a significantly older actor, William Frederick Knight, and then sending him off to some foreign planet forever. Aside from being a quintessentially poochy e moment, it also feels like one last jab at Yost. The Blue Ranger left Earth to pursue a relationship with an alien, implying that what, his love is inhuman? And that he doesn't belong on his home planet? I've made a really important decision. I'll miss you all, but I'm going to stay here on Aquatel with Sestria. He's so happy, he's speechless. Bye. 
that. Yost also has the rare distinction of having been personally wronged by Brian Cranston. Cranston has claimed, credibly, that they named Billy Cranston after him, but he referred to the character as the Fey One. For the record, the Blue Ranger isn't even canonically gay. On top of Yost's perpetual torment, William Frederick Knight passed away in 2022, clocking in the Blue Ranger at two curse points. Now, interestingly, Yost very briefly voiced the Pink Ranger in a body swap episode called Switching Places. Billy? Kimberly? So I award one point to the Pink Ranger. Finally, we reach the big dog, the Red Ranger. Now these next two stories are by far the most brutal, so I'm gonna largely gloss over them. In 2019, actor Pua Megasiva died by suicide, but only after, reportedly, almost murdering his wife. And in 2017, actor Ricardo Medina was convicted of manslaughter for killing his roommate with a huge sword. Now the only funny thing to come out of this is a cop on the scene who later said, he didn't want to tell us he was a Power Ranger. I think he felt that if we knew he was a Power Ranger, he should know some sort of defensive maneuvers. He doesn't know anything about martial arts or Kung Fu or Krav Maga or anything like that. He's an actor. On a somewhat lighter note, the last of the OG Power Rangers to majorly step in shit is Austin St. John. In 2022, this Gavone was indicted on federal charges as part of a scheme to fraudulently collect $3.5 million in PPP loans. Now look, I would love it if this were proven false, but he allegedly kicked up 400K to the masterminds at the top of the scheme. He's still alive and he allegedly did this to himself. But seeing the Red Ranger become the real life equivalent of a putty patroller is such an unbelievable heel turn, it merits half a curse point. So looking at the final tallies, it's clear that the Red Ranger, the original leader of the crew, has endured the most tragedy. And I know this has largely been a bummer, so I'm gonna play you out with a collection of badass moments from the original cast who, as of press time, have not deeply embarrassed the franchise. I will remember you. Thanks for watching this episode of Cannonball. I've been Jesse Eisman. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe and get in the comments.